Mr Speaker, I've been asked to vote for some pretty awful stuff over the last couple of years, but this, this has got to be the most profoundly unconservative measure. It compounds the damage that was done to rights of property in 2017. We have constituents who have been intimidated and bullied. I have a constituent who refused a survey because she didn't want a mask because a mask would compromise her existing enterprise. But she caved in when she was threatened with court action. And then, of course, when she refused the terms of the mask, she's presented with statutory orders requiring access for both a temporary mast and a permanent mast. And, of course, you have to get legal advice that comes at enormous cost. Happily, New Forest, uh, the New Forest National Park Authority has thrown out the applications for both of those masts. But the battle continues, the uncertainty continues, the cost continues. I've got another constituent who has let their collective roof, a group of constituents in a block, they've let their collective, collective roof, roof for antenna over the last few years and received an income. Now they get a demand for a dramatic reduction in the income with menace. And of course now they're having a deal with the demand for a 30-year lease of their entire roof. It is really quite extraordinary the way the terms of trade have been rigged against landowners. And w w w the Secretary of State presented this as if the problem was the landowners. We've got to find ways of forcing landowners, getting landowners to become more reasonable. Now, when I had a meeting with the Minister, she reassured me with the alternative dispute process, and we've heard something of it this evening from the Secretary of State. The problem with the alternative dispute, uh, dispute procedure is that it isn't mandatory. This, the, the telecom companies know that they don't need to engage with it because they can afford to go to court and they know that their victims can't afford to go to court. And that's the difficulty. That's the outrage that we have created. So it's no wonder that the whole rollout has stalled and no one wants to give access to a mask because the income isn't worth it and the consequences are frankly deplorable. So small farms, churches and small sport clubs who used to have an income now have had that crash and they have all the, uh, the uncertainty and the inconvenience of having to continue to host that mast. And I've pointed out in interventions, there's no prospect of getting it back without court action and development. Of course, I'll give way. For giving way. Would he also agree with, certainly with regards to sort of sports clubs, parish halls, village halls and the like, who have seen a real depression in their income as a result of COVID and non-use, etc., that this is precisely the worst time that they could possibly see an enforced reduction in income, many of whom will have hard-baked that expectation into their financial forecasts going forward. Of course, and these are the very people, these are the, the, the hearts of our community that are now identified as the villains for which this bill brings more power to bring to heel. It is the most monstrous piece of legislation that has been brought before us, uh, and we should deal with it accordingly. The, 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 we had a functioning market in 2016, and in 2017, we brought in measures. Whitehall has destroyed that market, egged on by rapacious uh, telecom companies. And this bill makes it even worse. Thank you very much.